I can't believe the rats in New York City eat better bagels than this. It's a ratty bagel world out there, Nicole, and we're just living in it. This, this is, is a hot, hot dog, dog is a sandwich. sandwich. Ketchup is a smoothie. Yeah, I put ice in my cereal, so what? That makes no sense. A hot dog is a sandwich. A hot dog is a sandwich. <laughs> what? <laughs> Welcome to our podcast, A Hot Dog is a Sandwich, the show where we break down the world's biggest internet debates. I'm your host, Josh Sher. And I'm your host, Nicole Anaiti. And Nicole, today in front of us, we have a bevy of bagels because we are taking down the question, are the bagels actually better in New York City. Yes. Now, you and I, we've... Wait, you're just saying yeah? No, no, no. This is what we're debating. I don't agree. Okay, yeah. Or Exa- do I? What? I don't know. I don't like New York. We were in New York together oh, once. Oh, Josh, really? I did love... You like, did you have a good time? Oh, my God. I could live in New York. You were thriving there. I was really living my best life. Every single step I took was the most miserable step of my life in Josh. New York. The whole city is hostile out there. The concrete <gasps> just radiates heat. There are these vents all over New York. I don't know if people know this, that just belch the city's undersquirts at you. Yeah. They just go, Bleh, and then just a belch of hot undersquirt New York yeah. air hits you right in the taint. Yeah. And it's a terrible experience. And they don't have, like, alleys. So they just kind of put trash out outside. There's just trash everywhere. But That's other not... than that, I love New York and I would t- I would be down to live there or visit there a lot more than I already it's do. The summers there are unbearable. It's just sweaty. It's hot. It's like the Great Gatsby where everyone's like murdering each other by the end. And spoiler alert, because everybody's <laughs> just hot and sweaty and it's a big metaphor. That's all of New York to me. But I have had the best bagels of my life in New York City. Yeah, I've had pretty good bagels in New York. But now we have to decide why that is because there's a lot of myths out there. And there's one myth that like I am very concerned about dispelling today. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And that is that it's because of the water. Right? Yeah, of course. They Brooklyn water. The same, they says yeah. the same thing about the pizza. Yeah. The, the, the pizza in Brooklyn is better because of the water. The pizza in, in wherever sucks because the water ain't got the right nutrients in it mm-hmm. or whatever. Um, that's all malarkey, right? Well, I, I've heard of the water theory, but I've heard of another theory where people say it's the hands. And like what do you the mean fact, the hands? They got the different hands. hands in New York? We got hands in <laughs> no, LA. We saying, have perfectly good hands at no, home, no, no, Nicole. They're saying that like the hands, you know, like the hands like public transit and stuff like that. They're clearly washed, but like wait, there's like wait, some wait, sort of, wait. this is something I heard. Like, I'm not kidding. Like they were talking about how pizza and bagels, how like the bread is better in New York and it's because of public transit. Like You're the telling hands. me people are like holding on to the grimy subway poles, yeah. getting all these bacterial cultures yeah. on their hands. It's like um the yeah. way it's like the way wild yeast naturally collects in France to yeah, make their yeah, wines yeah, better. Yeah. It's exactly they're the doing same that concept. in New York with just like pizza rat grease on the subway <laughs> poles, and they're putting that in your bread. Pizza rat reference, nice. Yeah, Did you I think pizza I rat. Does anybody yeah. remember pizza rat? Of course. It, it was an adorable rat that ate pizza, and um, but then a month later, we regret to inform you that pizza rat is racist. <laughs> <laughs> that was that was a joke within a joke within a joke. I'm yeah. too online. Yeah, I'm yeah, chronically yeah. online and it's a problem. But I have seen like there's a place called Brooklyn Water Bagels started by Larry King, right? Yes. Oh my god. And he brought he had machines that would quote unquote Brooklynize this is in Los Angeles. Water. Yeah. yeah. And he would just, I mean, RIP. But like he like would make there were like these big, huge, like silver vats in the back that were just pumping water with all these tubes and stuff. And you're like, wow, it tasted like a normal bagel. It tastes like a normal bagel, yeah. right? And that's the key. There is like a truth to the fact that different waters in different municipalities yeah. are different, right? And so there is like a, what is it, a higher concentration of magnesium calcium, uh, and calcium yeah. in Brooklyn water that they say makes the dough softer. But I think People don't understand quite enough about cooking when they're talking about this, like, very, very small minutia mm-hmm. of, like, what is the, you know, uh, um, mineral breakdown in your water. Mm-hmm. It's like, no, there are so many other points in the bagel making process that change your bagel immensely mm-hmm. that affect it on such a catastrophic level sure. that the amount of nutrients in your water aren't going to matter. Like, for instance... All the best bagels are, they're boiled, right? They have to be boiled, yeah. They have to be boiled. That's, to me, that's what makes a bagel. That's what gives it its signature chew. And so the way you make a bagel is you make the dough, you proof it, you roll punch it, it out, out. Mm-hmm. you punch it out, you punch the hole, or you hand... Uh, roll it, yeah. Hand roll it, make the hole. And then uh, you boil it, typically with, like, a sugar in the solution, right? I always thought it was a baking, a baking soda. soda solution. A baking soda. Some people use diastatic, what is it, diastatic Lye? malt? Lye? Was it malt? Yeah, some people use malt powder. Diastatic malt yeah, powder yeah, yeah. in there. And then uh, you put that in the oven, and then the steam from the boiling of the bagel actually caramelizes the outside. That's why you get that lovely chew right there, That's right? right. Mm-hmm. But then a lot of places, they started taking shortcuts back in the day. Mm-hmm. So they would just put the bagel into a steam oven, yeah. right? Or they wouldn't boil it at all because they're like, we got stuff to do. That adds extra time to the labor process. Sure. People just want... 
bread with a round hole in it and Nicole Bax that we get such difference. crappy bagels out in Los Angeles. Well, that's not true because there have been a ton of articles that have say, had that have been saying that LA is the best bagel in the world. Uh, They've been saying wait a second, wait a uh, second. They've been saying places like Bell's Bagels, your um Bell's Bagels, Courage Bagels, uh Hanks, there's some other places Yeasty Boys. People are saying that these bagels are the best in the world. They're even better than Montreal bagels. You don't agree? As somebody who used to write articles for a living, <laughs> you just have to say things. It was just So you a don't thing. think it's true? It was, no, I think there is, okay, there is a new school of bagel baker out That's there. That's true. And especially as regionality is just like losing its focus, right? People are moving from all corners yeah. of the world to all corners of the world, and that's beautiful. It's sharing traditions. And so, you know, you get some hipster who uh, loved making bagels somewhere else and figured out how to do it really well with a lot of craft and attention. Uh And you open up a spot and you're selling bagels for six bucks a pop without any toppings on them in Los Angeles. There's some new, some some good new school bagels out here. And we have a couple in front of us. Can you just say the word bagel? Bagel. You were saying bagel earlier. I say bagel, bagel weird. (laughs) You were saying (laughs) bagel. Not bagel. It's like bagel. Bagel. It's, It's a bagel. Ba- bagel. Bagel. <laughs> that's how I am much a bar- bagel. Is that how much baritone I have I in my voice? I am a gull that lives in a bay. I am a bagel. <laughs> uh- <laughs> I just really had to address that. So you want to try some? Let's try some. Okay, okay. Let's let's explain okay. what we got here. So uh, producer Mindy, God bless her, she was in New York and was like, hey, I can bring you guys back some bagels. So we have a couple right here. We're not saying these are the best bagels in New York. We no. are saying these are the bagels that Mindy was near. <laughs> yes, yes. I would say that the best ba- best bagels in New York are... Isa bagel and black seed bagel. I had a great bagel at Seidel's. I know it's gauche to love Seidel's. What's the other oh. one that has uh, Russ and Daughters? Russ and Daughters. Russ and Apparently Daughters. their bagels aren't that good, though. They say so you small. get bagels from elsewhere, and then you take it and get you the fish from Russ and, and Daughters. Sit or am in I the thinking park. of Zaybars? You're thinking of Zaybars. I'm thinking of Zaybars. I don't yeah, know. That's okay. I don't know. But uh, let's let's dig in. Let's dig in. Okay. So we got the New York bagel right here. Uh, should we toss, jump into this egg? That egg, looks really bagel? gorgeous. We must say, we must say it's that thick. we did, these are, these were frozen and we did warm them up. But we're going to try and like really put on our science yeah, hat here and see if we right. can see something different between. So we have like this New York bagel right here from a spot called Bagel Pub in Brooklyn. And tell you what, Nicole. You know who says Bagel Pub has the best bagels in all of New York? Is it Bagel Pub? Bagel Pub says that about <laughs> Bagel Pub. So that's very exciting. Okay, I'm going to dip this into uh, cream cheese that okay. I got from Courage Bagels. I have to tell you a story. Tell me, tell it right now. Do we, we're on a storytelling medium. I'm kind of <laughs> you know? embarrassed to tell you. Why? Okay. So we got Courage Bagels for the podcast. And um, I was going to like put them in the freezer. But to make sure that they stay nice and fresh, I put them in the vac sealer. <laughs> And all of the air came out of the bagels and they turned yeah. into like chips. And mm-hmm. then I thought, oh, let me just open the bu- the like container. It didn't do anything. And then there were just these flat little discs of bagels. And I felt so sad because Navia stood in line for an hour and a half to get them. So I didn't get any courage bagels, but I got the cream cheese. So. You thought like a cartoon when you flattened a bagel and you opened the vac seal <laughs> bag, it would just pop back to life. Yeah. Yeah, I can see how you'd I think did. that. I can see you'd think I that. I did. I did. Let's tear into some. Okay, the other ones we have. Mm-hmm. This to me is like an old school LA bagel. What is it? So this is Western Bagel. It is a chain across Los Angeles. There's mm-hmm. a bunch in the Valley. Um, to me, this is your definition of like an average mid LA bagel. I don't believe are these boiled. They don't seem boiled. This seems like a bread roll. You know what I mean? I don't know. Let's look at the the difference between our first LA bagel. And our New York bagel. Well, the New York bagel uh, has more holes in it. There's more like air pockets. I feel like the Western is more dense. Yeah. The Western one definitely seems denser. I also got cream cheese from here. <laughs> Although we got, this is an egg, everything That's bagel. But th- is there food dye in here? I was going to say, there's got to be turmeric in here. These are abnormally yellow. Let's, let's, let's jump into this just like absolutely misshapen New York plain bagel. Yeah. These seem bad, right? These seem like bad bagels. They don't seem horrible. They it seems see- like a pretty bad... I can't imagine like a worse bagel than this. No, you're being dramatic. No, but I feel like... Okay, what, what to you makes a good bagel? Chew. Uh-huh. Crust. Flavor. Can withstand the holdings of a lox cream cheese, tomato, salt, pepper, smattering. You don't like it? This is just like a... This is just bread. This is just white bread. 
I think it's okay. I think it's. I think it has a little bit of chew. Also, you have to remember these were frozen and came back to life. No, no, no. But like freezing a bagel doesn't like change the structure of the interior like this. Like to me, this is this is like significantly too uh, fluffy. Okay. For a bagel, right? Mm-hmm. I think you need. I think bagels one should be a little bit more petite than this, and I think that they need to have like a more defined crust. Okay. I want like a very chewy, very toothsome crust. Sure. And then I want like. An interior that's a little bit dense and has like a heavy, heavy glutinous spring and chew to it, right? Mm, okay. To me, that's what separates like a bagel from uh, dinner sort roll, of Kaiser roll, right? Yeah. And it's so I don't know. L- it's a little Kaiser rolling now that you mention it. A little Kaiser rolling, but but it does have a distinct. I think the crust is distinct enough from the center. I'm trying to discern any difference between the LA bagel is definitely a little bit lighter. Yeah, I will agree. Which is which is a sign of a nice boil. I don't know. I don't want you a don't light think bagel. You don't. You don't want a light bagel. They no. need to be. Josh, Dude, what why are you would you talking boil a about? bagel if you want it to be light? It steams. But but that makes it denser. No, it doesn't. It makes it heavy. Oh my god. Um. Oh god. This average LA bagel mm-hmm. is better than this one, right? I than agree. the one from New York. It is. Like hundred percent. Mm. Fifty percent. Fifty percent. Mm-hmm. Okay. Again, this is from like a random bagel spot in New York, but if we're you- talking about like the water. Did you try the plain one? Mm, I did not. The plain one is miles better than the New York one. <laughs> laptops are everything. Oh, yeah. No, we everything. now have everything flavored laptops. In here. <laughs> My laptop tastes like bagel. That's good. Do you want to try Hank's now? So let's get into the new school. Let's get into okay. like, this is why people are talking about places like LA being like a, a new bagel haven. Maybe the best bagel city in the world. Okay, put your ear to this bagel. You know what that sounds like? A CPR dummy. Sounds like a CPR dummy. That's because there's air in here. This is how you know Nicole took the voluntary CPR class that Mythical offered, and I did not. (laughs) I forgot. I was drinking my coffee in my office, and I was like, where'd everybody go? (laughs) And then I would have been 15 minutes late to the CPR class, and I was like, not worth it. I'm really glad that I work somewhere that offers me that kind of, you know, situation. This is fluffy, Josh. Spring back. Okay, it's fluffy, but it has like a heavy spring back. In a way that this that one, also does. That one also does too. Okay, I'm going to dip into the cream cheese. I've been eating all of the separate cream cheeses. The, mm. difference, is the, cr- the difference is the crust on this, right? Mm, there's two. There's no There's mm. no mistaking this for bread. Mm. Like that, And that to me is what a bagel needs to be. A bagel mm. needs to be so distinct from bread. It's like a, It's like a pretzel, right? Totally. It's like a pretzel should not, it's a specialty baked good. It should not have that like. Totally. Fluffiness. I'm not a dense chew to my bagel. I get that with Hank's. This is a great bagel. Mm-hmm. This is a great bagel. Mm-hmm. There's also, of course, a bunch of like really great new school bagels in New York. And a lot of people that something that's really trendy is doing Montreal style bagels, mm-hmm. which are a little bit sweeter, a little bit smaller, a little bit denser, a more defined hole to it. Yep. You know that's what I mean? right. <clears throat> but we have to get into the stereotype of like why. People think that New York has better bagels than L.A. and why it actually is, right? I think people assume that because New York has been an an institution for bagels since, what, Ellis Island happened? Mm -hmm. They're like, whatever, it's like family-owned businesses and people have been making bagels for, you know, almost 100 years. It's iconic. People's grandmas, grandpas are making it, pass it down, pass it down. So So there's a deep amount of, like, respect for those that make bagels in New York because they've been doing it for so long. Do they I, do it right now? Well, I don't really know. People are going to be so mad about the mouth noises on this episode, and I don't care. I'm, I don't I'm care. loving chewing through these bagels. This Hank's bagel is so freaking good. It really is. To me, it all comes down to the history of a region, right? Mm-hmm. In the history of New York, right, there's a much bigger Ashkenazi Jewish history, and bagels are, like, bagels literally a Yiddish word. Yeah. Right? Comes from Jewish bakers in, like, the 1600s who were, had to be completely separate from the Christian bakers. Mm-hmm. There's a long history of Jews selling bagels to the Gentiles. Yes. And that was, like, the first sort of bit of Jewish culture. And this is going back, going back hundreds of years. And so when Jews got to New York, there was a big Jewish wave of immigration in the 1880s mm-hmm. uh, from Russia because I think they thought the Jews conspired to kill Tsar Alexander II. It was a whole... Who have it? The Jews conspired to kill him. I right? <laughs> I'm saying throughout history, we've been blamed for every major assassination. So they, and anytime the Jews got blamed for anything, more of them went to New York. Um, <laughs> and so there were bagel bakeries in New York in like mm-hmm. the 1890s in a way that there generally weren't in, say, Los Angeles. So like you said, you yeah, have right. that big culture, that big history. Not only that, the, there was a bagel bakers union. That's that was incredible. Like, 
in like in like the early 1900s. That's cool. It was like one of the most formative unions in America. That's incredible. Which is really awesome. And that was before the bagel automation process. So my general theory is bagel baking in New York, people literally have passed down from generation to generation this nostalgia factor mm -hmm. of like, I ate bagels from this place, your father ate bagels from this place, yada, yada. However, ever since the invention of, God, what was his name? It was like Harvey Lender or something of uh, the uh, automated bagel making machine. Okay. I think the quality has declined and declined and New York is literally resting on its laurels and its reputation okay. as being a good bagel spot. And I think other cities like Los Angeles are ripe to come in and take it from them. I think you're right. I think, I mean, we can just tell by the two bagels we had, they are miles better than the ones that we got from New York. The chew, the chew, the bite, the texture. It's just incredible. Shout out to Hanks in Los Angeles. Yeah, I think y'all make a hell of a bagel. I've been a, a big fan. Their salt rosemary one's really good too. Mm -hmm. Oh, Josh, what's your favorite bagel? Have we talked about this? We've talked about this a while, but I just want to remind everyone, what's your favorite bagel? I'm a huge everything guy. I've okay. always loved everything bagels. It's mm -hmm. like the onion, the garlic. Sure. Sesame seeds on there. If I'm not getting everything, I'm getting plain uh, sesame seed bagel. Mm -hmm. And I get sesame bagels toasted, but everything bagels untoasted because I like toasted sesame flavor. Okay. But I'll get cream cheese, tomato, lox, red onion. That's it. Scallion cream cheese sometimes if I'm feeling a little crazy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. I Open always... faced. Always. Oh, yeah. We were talking about that. But I love, but I absolutely love a, a jalapeno cheese bagel. <laughs> That's my favorite from the Ralphs. That's the most LA thing. That's like, <laughs> yeah. pull up. Ralphs bagels are good. Mm -hmm. Grocery store bagels are like perfectly fine. They're mm -hmm. so much better than like, you know, getting uh, a Sarah Lee bagel, mm -hmm. you know, the, the pre-made stuff. The bagel we got from New York is very Sarah Lee-esque. The bagel we got from New York is very Sarah Lee-esque. It's a very bad bagel, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. Which is interesting because, okay, hear me out, hear me out. Mm -hmm. I think we've talked about it a little bit, but I want to flesh it out more here, is that like the reason pizza, say, is better is better in New York, which that's the thing I fully believe. I think pizza's better in New York. I think pizza's better in New York. The bagels on average might be better in New York. It's not what we saw here today, but it still probably rings true. Mm -hmm. And I believe the tacos are better in Los Angeles. Um, pizza's, oh, yeah, no, duh. <laughs> yeah, I mean, that's obvious. But it's to me, it's it's simply because there are a lot more Italian-Americans in New York than there are that's in true. Los Angeles. They've been there for longer. So you can't serve bad pizza because Italian-Americans aren't going to buy it because they know good pizza. Yeah, and they'll, similar, they'll tell you if it's bad. Yeah, yeah. similar with, with Mexican people in Los Angeles, right? We're like mm -hmm. a, a plurality, you know, Latino city. And so that's the reason you can go to any street corner and find someone selling awesome tacos for like a buck fifty a pop. That's right. And they're incredible. Bagels. New York Jewish population around 11%. Is there really 11%? Uh, there are a lot of different numbers that I've seen, but I got it from like, it was like virtualjewishlibrary.org and that seems legit enough. It's an org. It's an org. That's and it's, you a, know it's a virtual it's library. And no, I'm convinced. Yeah, that, that, that makes sense. Yeah. So New York, this is New York metro area and LA metro area. 11% uh, for New York, about 5.5% for Los Angeles. No way. And okay. also a much younger Jewish population in Los Angeles, That's right? That's true, yeah. And so to me, it's like you just have a much younger bagel culture and LA, not true. enough time for it to really mature and blossom. But I will say that the, the hype around these brand new fangled uh, shops. New fangled crazy. bangles? <laughs> <laughs> you like you like here, like there's 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 two competing bagel spots in Ocean Park. One of them is Layla Bagels I've and there's that. another one. I don't know the name of it, but literally there's lines going separate around the block and people are get like going with their friends. One mm. person stands in line for Layla's, one person stands in line for the other, and then they get it and compare it to each you other. You know how I know Layla's one? Because the name you re I remember? Yep. Yeah. <laughs> like there's just, there's just so much hype around bagels in LA though that I feel New York has that hype, but LA is just going with it right now. So you think it's the rate of which... It's uh, Like things... Time is a flat circle, right? Like okay. the food, culinary trends go in waves. Yeah, I get that. Yeah. Like at some point, um, you know, I'm sure Boston had the best bagels or whatever in, in America. Mm -hmm. You know, like uh, there's just, you know, the cyclical nature to it is you think like LA 20 years from now, people aren't even going to remember New York bagels. Do I think people are going to remember New York bagels? No, like people, uh, I th do you think 20 years from now at the rate at which LA is, is expanding its mm -hmm. bagel footprint? People are not going to remember the fact that New York no. once had the best bagels. We are going to wipe the bagel no. history off the map of New York. We are coming for the spot, Nicole. I don't think that's possible. I don't think it's possible. I think we will continue to beef like East Coast, West Coast, like Biggie and Tupac. Of course. And that's it. You know, 
there's never going to be a right answer. Like you and I are LA people. We're from here. We're born and raised here. We've been to New York. Only, how many times have you been to New York? Ugh, like four. I've been like twice in my life. You know what I mean? So I'm not the best authority to talk about which one is better. But from what I'm seeing here, I will say that LA's bagels are better than New York's bagels. 100%. What's the best bagel you've ever had in your life, though? Like, Isa, have, you, have you had a life-changing bagel? Yeah. Issa bagel. Essa bagel in New York. It's Issa bagel. It's pronounced, it is like literally pronounced Essa Josh, bagel. Josh. It's spelled E-S-S a bagel. So what? Just That's because how, this is how words work. Josh, what no. Do you mean, so what? No, it's not. That's okay, not listen, how my words Nicole, are. can you chill? <laughs> yes, George. <laughs> <laughs> no, I will say Issa bagel. I mean, their bagel was just delicious and the cream cheese was fresh and it was hot and it was steamy and it was sexy and it was delicious mm-hmm. and I loved it. So yeah, the bagels like that it changed my life. Courage also here. C- Courage in Los Angeles. Have you had it? Uh, I haven't had it yet. Mm-hmm. I don't want to brave the lines. I know. I should. I should. I should go. Okay, let's go. I should go this weekend. Let's do it. Okay. Um, <laughs> what are foods that you think other cities have a cultural lock on? Mm. Like Los Angeles for tacos to me is like a no-brainer, yeah. right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. For sure. New for York sure. bagels and pizza. New York pizza. It's New not York bagels pizza. anymore. It's honestly not bagels anymore. I'm so sorry. Please don't. It come might not me. be though, right? Like I, I've I've had like their the average bagel in New York is just like perfectly fine, but it's not the same as the average slice in New York or the average taco in LA. That's true. Like I believe the average That's taco true. in LA is so many miles better than the average taco you are in correct. any other city in America. You are correct. Uh, what's the place? Poutine is that Montreal, Vancouver? Poutine, poutine in Montreal. Poutine in Montreal. That might actually be one because poutine in so many other places mm-hmm. is like it's it's rat effed. Really, is, people will, are just bastard. It left well, and people right. in Montreal, they're very, they're like, it has to be a dark beef gravy. It Ugh. has to have that like demi gloss like appeal. It has, it has to be, to be the squeaky curse. cheese curds, mm-hmm. a thick cut, like double fried fry. And you go to a lot of other places and they're like, oh, here's like some mozzarella cheese. So that might be a good one. Yeah. I would say, um, what's some other ones? Uh, a lot of just like big immigrant communities that settle in places that yeah. like don't elsewhere. So you, like Miami and Cuban food. I was going to say Cuban food. Chicago deep dish pizza. Deep dish pizza have in you Chicago. Had, have you had any good deep dish pizzas here? I have. Not really. Me there, there are either. places that have done it. Like there's a spot called Rance's. Yeah. They was don't doing do- it. Masa of Echo Park. Nothing um, like it. I, the Chicago one was the best one. But yeah, but but everything in Chicago, the average deep dish in Chicago is so much better than because everywhere else. Yeah, that's terroir. That's because food, like it has a sense of place. That's right. That are created by the people. Exactly. You know what exactly. I mean? Exactly. I just don't think I. I don't. I think the bagels have fallen off in New York a little bit. Bagels in New York. You, were, you come back. I know. Where'd you well, go? Well, we just have to tell them, please. Don't come to Los Angeles. Just stay in New York and make the bagels better in New York, please. They're good there. Just work at it, please. <laughs> <laughs> did you, Josh? Did you even try the cream cheeses, man? Did you even say which cream cheese you like better? Are they not all from the same factory? Are the cream cheeses not all from the same factory? <laughs> <laughs> Just spit. <laughs> but like, are they like making their cream cheese in house? I know some. I know some, some places, places have, like started making their own cream cheese in house. I just um, don't know that any of these places are actually doing it. I, I don't know. They all taste different to me. Mm-hmm. How did Jews end up smoking salmon? I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. Maggie, you Google that real quick. It's something I probably should have researched before this, but I have a theory. I have a theory, and then Maggie, can you tell me if I'm correct? Break it down, Josh. Okay, so <laughs> judging my, by my, like, Eastern European Jewish family members, huh? smoked fish has always been a part of it, but it's always been, like, mackerel and herring and sprats uh-huh. and, like, uh, what are kippers? I don't even know what kippers are. Is that kippers, kippers. and herring? I don't know, but kippers is, like, a smoked in vinegar or something or other. But they're all these like small river fish, right? Because that's what they could get. Maybe a lot some of the Russian Jews are eating smoked sturgeon. But like salmon, that's not a thing over there, right? Norwegian, right? Salmon's Norwegian. I mean, salmon is it's it's in the Americas as well. Um, but like, I have a feeling that it was just nor- enterprising Scandinavian businessmen who got the Jews to start using their smoking techniques mm-hmm. on salmon instead of their small fish because they can get bigger slices out of them. Well, then a Scandinavian guy. Do that in Japan and tell people, hey, eat raw salmon. Isn't God dang right he did. Yeah. God dang right he did. Maybe. It's so highly possible. I'm wondering if it's the same, if it's the bagels, same situation. I'm just eating bagels. This is my lunch. <laughs> uh, how do you feel about people just making like a classic deli sandwich on a bagel instead of bread? Ugh, I hate it. You hate it? I hate I it too. I hate it too. I despise it. Gross. It is literally the worst. A bagel, <laughs> a bacon, egg, and cheese on a bagel? Patoy, get out of here. I think it's a pretty common thing that Put people Put it enjoy. on an English muffin. Grow up. Um, I have never had a bacon, egg, and cheese from New York. I'm sorry. Have you ever had one? Yeah. 
Have you ever had chopped cheese from New York? No. Me Did neither. you? No. Okay. Cheese steaks in Philly. That's another one. That's another one. Another one. That's another one that people really mess up. Do you want to go? That city. Okay. So we have plans to have bagels this weekend. Mm -hmm. But like, do you, you sound like you want to go back to New York. <laughs> I would love to go back to New York. New York is my favorite city. And my, fa <laughs> and my favorite thing about New York is how romantic it is. Because Nicole, <laughs> it snows there 11 months out of the year. I don't know if you know this. I think it's only like seven months out of the year. I think you're being a dramatic. Well, it's seven to eight months, boy. depending on if the vernal equinox has happened or not. Okay. But that's my favorite thing. It's just you're you're walking through Central Park, r roller skating on the ice, but not ice skating. You're roller skating on the ice and you, you know, you fall over and then she's like, oh my God, and she helps you up. And then like you both rolling around on the ground, you're kissing and then, uh, you know, and then a bunch of pigeons just come and swarm you and one just vomits a cigarette butt right in your <laughs> mouth. And that's New York, baby, the big apple. That's why we love it. One of my first, <laughs> one of my first days with David was roller skating. And then a pigeon vomited a cigarette butt <laughs> no. in your mouth? And then um, he took me again like uh, two months ago and I said, never, ever take me ice skating ever again. Terrible day. It's a terrible, terrible day. But it was so fun. And, you know, <laughs> it was beautiful. And I will never go ice skating ever again. Not even New York Rockefeller Center. I will not. I will not. But I will eat a bagel. Heck yeah, you will. In conclusion, are the bagels actually better in New York? <sighs> this test says no. <laughs> This test, no. And this is a very flawed scientific test to be very. fair. Very. And our science was based on where Mindy was at the time very. and how much we felt like inconveniencing her. And the that answer was right. she was near Bagel Pub and not a lot, respectively, Correct. are the answers. Um, but I think the general idea of if there are more people, if there is a higher supply and a higher demand, you have a higher chance of outliers, right? If you sure. have more, more Jews, I know non-Jews eat bagels too, but if you got more Jews... <laughs> Demanding more bagels baked by more Jews, then there is a higher chance of one of those Jews being incredible at baking bagels, right? Ditto with pizza, ditto with tacos, ditto with Philly cheesesteak, ditto with deep dish, ditto with ropa vieja. You know what I mean? So you just like find a high concentration of the thing you want and then you have more choice and it has nothing to do with the chemical composition of the water. Shalom Aleichem Malachi Shalom Kadesh Baruch Hu The hot dog! Good Mythical Evening is back, and it's more uncensored, unfiltered, and unhinged than ever. Mark your calendars for Thursday, August 24th at 7 p.m. Pacific, streaming on Kizwe. This year's theme is pain or pleasure, Ooh. and those decisions are almost entirely in your hands. You, the viewer, will play a more important role than ever because you'll be voting to determine what happens to Rhett and Link. Uh-oh! And for the first time ever, Good Mythical Evening will also be streamed live at participating Alamo Drafthouse locations across the U.S. Seating is very limited, so be sure to grab those tickets early. Go to goodmythicalevening.com for all the details to purchase your tickets. All right, Nicole, we've heard what you and I have to say. Now it's time to find out what other wacky ideas are rattling out there in the universe. It's time for a segment we call Opinions, Opinions Are Like Casseroles. casseroles. But before we get into that, we got a brand new segment called Pole Dance, where Nicole does a five-second interpretive dance based on the poll that we posted on Spotify. Uh, Nicole, your timer starts in three, two, go. All right, so we asked, which is better, green salsa or red salsa? 57% of people responded with red salsa, only 43% green, which is actually a lot more parody than I thought. I thought people were going to go heavily red on that, as Nicole is explaining via her beautiful <laughs> dance. Nicole, that was good stuff. Thanks. At the end, I just wanted everyone to open their eyes and realize how important it is to vote in polls. You're real Twyla Tharp. <laughs> using your dance for uh, political action. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Big fan of Twyla Tharp. Big Twyla Tharp fan? Oh, I'm Huge. A th I'm a Tharp head. She was, a, she was the one that used the, uh, the scarves. It, maybe. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. All right, let's get into some voicemails. Hi, Josh and Nicole. Hi. Good to talk to you. Um, I think <laughs> that the best and dare I say only way to drink beer is to add salt. When I go to a mm, bar, yes. I order mm -hmm. a pint with a salted rim. Uh, yes, ma'am. When I'm home, I just like throw some salt in the can. In college, we used to say, if you put salt in a Miller, it tastes like a Stella. So... <laughs> Oh, I just have gotten okay. in the habit of salting my beers and it's made them a lot better. And even better than that is a Michelada. But I think we all know this. You That's throw true. some mm -hmm. lime juice, some Worcestershire, some soy sauce, some Tabasco into a glass with ice, a little tahini rim. With your, That's the best, best way. But 
really, everyone should just be salting their beers. I'm a big, like, lager pilsner guy, though. I can't speak to, like, Me too. salting an IPA because I think IPAs are gross in the first place. And I think that we should stop pretending that they taste good. But, yeah, yeah. hope you guys are having a good time and put some salt on your next beer. XOXO. Excellent opinion. Yeah, I first of all, I hate IPAs so much. I have such a nostalgic soft spot for it because I drank so much when I was a teen, a 21-year-old teenager. Like Dos Equis? And Dos Equis isn't an IPA. No, I mean, like, we're talking, like, Stone, Lagunitas, Firestone IPA, uh, Modern Times, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. you know, all that stuff. Um, <laughs> so I drink a lot of those, and I still really enjoy them, especially when I go back to visit friends in San Diego. You know, going to the breweries there and you drink some like 14% IPA. That yeah, serve in that's a three fun. ounce thimble and it just like punches you in the throat. Why did I always think Dos Equis was an IPA? Uh, I don't know what Dos Equis technically is, though. It's a, is lager. It a lager. I just looked it it's up. It's a lager. But no, I love Pilsners. And I, I like the idea mm. of adding. I always whenever I have a Corona, I always put a little bit of salt and lime in there and a dash of um, Tapatio. Ah. <laughs> but uh, I've seen it a lot on TikTok of people salting beers. Yeah, it's I like love a thing right now. A, a lot of what I want from a beer. Like if I'm just drinking a beer with my meal, I'm typically not going IPA. Sure. Right? A, something like a Pilsner is fantastic because yeah. it's super clean. It's light. It's fresh. It's crisp. It's cold. It's not like an abrasive flavor, but you add a little bit of salt to it and it just kind of like rounds it out, rounds it out. It cuts uh-huh. through that bitterness. And also her talking about micheladas, there's like a wide spectrum of like the chelada plex in Mexican sure. culture, right? And so some people, they think if you just call it a chelada, that just means lime and salt in your beer, which is really fantastic. Is that fantastic. true? So there's like chelada, michelada, cubana. Okay. And, and all these terms get really nebulous and they shift depending on where you are. So mm-hmm. it's not like a perfect science. Mm-hmm. Um, some micheladas have tomato. Some micheladas don't have tomato, stuff like that. Um, but there is a drink recognized as a gelada that is just lime and salt, which is That's beautiful. my jam. I'm in. I do love a full, a full michi though. Me too. Have you ever had a michelada with a tamarindo stick? Yes. Oh, I've had the the, the freak chiladas out there. Oh, where they put like lollipops and oh, stuff. Oh, they'll in put there? lollipops. They'll put whole like shrimp cocktail. Yeah, in yeah, there, yeah. Served yeah. in a giant hollowed out watermelon. I'm into that. It's kind I'm of a fun into time. that. Yeah, it's yeah, not yeah. an everyday thing. It's, it's a, a good summer. Time. It's a good summer treat. I just want a beer. I love a beer right now. I got a beer. Who wants to get daddy a beer? Who need Papa? Needs a beer. Come on, beer, Papa. Come on. Who got a beer for Papa? You just had a bagel, and you now you want to have beer? A bagel's just solid beer. <laughs> Beer just a liquid bagel. Next opinion, Maggie, please. Where's my everything bagel IPA? <laughs> Love the voicemail. Big it. controversy. Clementines. <laughs> Clementines <laughs> okay. do not exist anymore. Cuties <sighs> brand whoa. used to be Clementines. Whoa, whoa, now whoa, whoa, whoa. Now it's Cuties Mandarins. There are no Clementines for the last three years. Hold what up. is up with that? Please help me bring back Clementines. Mandarins suck. They're too sweet. <laughs> I want the tart clementines back. Give me cuties clementines. Please and thank you. I love you. Interesting note about the clementines branding not existing anymore, which is true, and I haven't even thought of that. It doesn't. Well, unless you go to the farmer's market or you got a cool neighbor. But that do they call them do. clementines? Oh, because it's a, it's a it's a mandarin, right? It's a small citrus fruit. I that's don't know like the genus to not species. have seeds. I, I don't know that much about it either. Mm-mm. I eat a ton of them. I eat like three of those bad boys a I day. I love them so much. Um, I love them a lot be, simply because I love oranges. I love citrus fruit. Me too. But like a navel or a Valencia orange is so tough and annoying to just peel. Yeah. And you get a ton of pith on the outside and you can't just eat the segments enjoyably. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. The big thing that clementines did, now cuties, halos, whatever is that they have an easy-to-peel peel. Yeah. There's no seeds, yeah. and you can just throw them back. So good. But there's a new player on the scene. Uh, sumo? Sumo's, baby. Well, I've... Sumo. I've, I've known about sumo sumo uh, citrus for a long time. But they got a big old advertising campaign out there now. I have seen that. They're getting that. the name out. I have seen that. They're getting yeah. the name out. So a sumo is like a gigantic clementine, mandarin, whatever, in the sense that it has a very easy-to-peel peel. It just satsuma. comes right off. It's a satsuma. It's a satsuma? Yeah. Yeah. Um... And that's fantastic. But I don't know if like, do they just keep selectively breeding yes. the mandarins to be sweeter? Yeah, I think so. Man, so kids will eat them. That's interesting. I wonder if they are actually less tart or if your palate has just changed. I love really sour, like, like clementine mandarin things. Same. They're so good. I want a little bit of abrasiveness. I want oh my gosh. Like a, uh, what's the, the Filipino fruit that I love? 
Okay. Calamansi. Calamansi. So oh, good. like calamansi. Ugh, so good. Man, the world of fruit breeding, though. Riveting stuff. I want uh, David Guest to make a mockumentary about fruit breeders. Is that Bluestone Hill guy? No, David Guest is the guy who did like a uh, Spinal Tap, oh, Dustin Show, never Waiting seen, for Guffman. Never seen it. Mascots. Never seen it. Fun times, Nicole. Oh, also <laughs> have to issue a stack correction. I, oh, I mentioned that maybe Jews didn't know about salmon. Turns out Jews have known about salmon for a long time. Salmon, uh, very popular in the Baltic states Huge. and also in Russia. And they farm a whole lot of it there. Huge. So it turns out Jews was just smoking salmon. Like for everyone else. A, like, yeah, for like, like a long time. Like with all the other fishies. And then they just kind of like brought that over to like eventually London and then eventually New York. Why didn't Jews do this Feast of Seven Fishes? They had so many fishes. They have so many fishes. They should have just done Jews it. Jews could have done eight fishes. Could have done, yeah. Jews could have done eight fishes. Could have done nine. That's all I'm saying. Right, next opinion. I, do you know what the Feast of Seven Fishes is about? I have no idea. I just saw it in the bear and I'm like, uh. But uh, you knew about it before the bear, of right? Of course. But like what? It... Maggie, can we have the next opinion? <laughs> It's something about Christianity, bro. I don't know. Jesus is depicted as a fish. I know that. Jesus' symbol is a fish on the back Annalise. of cars. Annalise, why Jesus a fish? <laughs> Teach a man to, to fish. No, no. Give a man a fish. Feed him one day. Teach a man to fish. Feed him for a lifetime. No, no, no. Give a man a fish. He knows where to come to buy fish. Teach a man to fish and you've lost your entire customer base. <laughs> That's the Jewish version. This is a business. <laughs> Why would I teach you to fish? I know how to fish. I got all the good fish in my spot. You come to Jesus. me for fish. I'll give you a good deal on the fish. Next opinion, Maggie, save us. I'm save not us. anti-Semitic. Hey, Josh and Nicole. This is Andres from Denver, Colorado. Hi, Andres. Um, a slept on food combination is barbecue chips with pesto. Ugh. This works best <laughs> with kettle, kettle backyard barbecue chips. What the hell is going on? I think... In my experience, pretty much any barbecue chip will work. Ugh. But that is the best combo by far. Andres, that awesome. is... Have a good time. Sorry Bye. to cut you off. That is so <laughs> headache-inducing. It's... Um, I just love the verbiage that he used of slept on. It, as if people know that this is a combo. Keep sleeping on that it. That people eat a lot. Put it under your but pillow. But people are just sleeping on it. They're just being deliberately obtuse about the fact that it exists. Now, I've never thought about putting these two foods together in my life. The interesting thing about them, they're both such complete flavor profiles yes like uh what's what's a good thing to put on a barbecue chip not much it's kind of its own it's thing its maybe, own thing maybe onion dip i would write a very plain neutral yeah. creamy dip because yeah. it's already spicy it's true sweet, it's acidic sure a good thing to put pesto on P pasta the plainest food <laughs> they're both like such yeah. heavy profiles intense flavors headache inducing them together headache inducing i what would love it? to try it Mm. I feel like it'd be a rush in your mouth. I feel mm. like it'd be a party in there. The only it'd be like way, a euphoria party. The oh, I don't need to do like euphoria. Crazy drugs. And, <laughs> I never, you know, I was so uncomfortable the first episode of Euphoria. I couldn't watch the rest of but it. But then you just kept going. But then I saw the rest of the Idol. No, I stopped. Oh, but I saw the Idol in like one day. You watch all of the Idol in one day. Euphoria is more uncomfortable than the Idol, right? Is it? Well, the Idol to me is it's like <laughs> a it's like a it's like a stage play. It's mm. like you're watching the behind the scenes craft of it all. You're like, why is the weekend doing this? I think in ten years it's gonna be showgirls level. I think it might be. It might be yeah. showgirls level camp, but it didn't even get to that. Mm. It will Ice them for down the kids. For, me, baby. <laughs> for the kids, <laughs> for the kids <laughs> they're gonna be like, ah, okay. How old were you when you watched Showgirls? Mm, well, it was on TV, and they edited it in. They edited it out, like all the bad words and all the naughty bits. So maybe I was like, what, sixteen, seventeen? When you saw it, like unedited. Yeah, when I saw it edited. Oh, edited. Gotcha. And I gotcha. saw it again when I was like older. Yeah, yeah. How about you? Uh like too young. Eleven. <laughs> yeah, about eleven. About eleven. <laughs> they edited in like digital bikinis. bikinis. It was bizarre. Yeah, they, they would the walk and it'd be like. Yeah, the bikini would be like trying to follow them. It's utterly <laughs> Elizabeth Berkeley, though, huge fan. Yeah. Hey, Josh. Hi. My opinion is you should have cooked that tomato paste before you put it into your Dino Nugget Parmesan. Thanks. Bye. What people? Okay, what is up with <laughs> Wait, people talking about cooking tomato paste? Hold on, I'm here too. <laughs> Her. I always, I always cook my tomato paste. Why? Why? What? Why do you cook your because tomato paste? Because it's in a can and it's metallic tasting and it gets rid of the metallic taste. Does it? Does it? Yeah, it does. I don't, does it? I don't know. I've never <laughs> cooked. Well, okay. Like, <laughs> hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. If you're, if you're, if you're using tomato paste, yeah. you're likely cooking it, right? There's not a lot of like raw, cold tomato paste preparations out there. Well, some pizza sauces. Are, are they talking lazy. about 
some pizza sauce if you're lazy, yeah. but then you're adding heat to it and that's cooking it. Like, I don't understand. There's a disconnect here for me. Okay. Are people talking about caramelizing it in the pan? Because that's the technique I do if I'm making, like, bolognese. I'll add anchovy paste and tomato paste in the middle of a bolognese, get some color on that in the pan, I caramelize it, deepen it, yada, yada. But also, let's let's analyze the statement you just made. You should have cooked your tomato paste when you were making what? <laughs> Dino nugget parmesan. If I had <laughs> any amount of self-respect or culinary skill or acumen, I would not have been making... D -d -d Dino nugget parmesan <laughs> in the first place, man. You need to check yourself, all right? Because you're coming hey. here. You know, no, hey, 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 Josh. He's coming here talking all crazy Josh, to me. Hey, Josh. He's talking all crazy. I'm going to go to his job talking Josh. all crazy to him. Where you work? He probably is like, Where you I don't work? Know. Library? I'm coming in. <laughs> I'll be like, oh, don't put that book there. <laughs> What's with the Dewey Decimal System or whatever? What's it called? The Dewey <laughs> Dewey Decimal System actually really formative, really incredible way to organize. What is uh, this? A the Dewey? What do I say? The Dewey Decimal System. Are you saying decibel? Decimal. <laughs> decimal. <laughs> oh my God! Well, come on, come on, like, keep them going. I'm I love gonna, doing the podcast in the kitchen. Can I just say, doing the podcast in mythical kitchen is actually so much more fun. Yeah, I feel like I'm hanging out in like the basketball gym after it closed <laughs> yeah, in high school. You know? Yeah, that's the same. Yeah. Same. <laughs> hey, Josh and, Kim and Nicole. Um, <laughs> hey, it's me, Quinn. Uh, I'm from North Carolina, Hi. So Quinn, and I you. and my hot take is I think that nacho cheese deserve to be on a Subway ham sandwich. Yes. What do you guys think? My man, Quinn. Quinn, great. I agree. More liquid cheeses. With ham. With ham. <laughs> and Subway. <laughs> and Subway. Subway could have <laughs> fixed all of their problems if they just got a vat of liquid cheese. You know who did Quinn. that? Chipotle. It, well, Chipotle's liquid cheese is, is ass. But I'm saying, but you get some good liquid nacho cheese, some of like the canned stuff mm -hmm. at a Subway. <laughs> I'm putting that on the meatball sandwich. I'm putting that on the tuna sandwich. You know, I'm putting that on all the sandwiches at Subway. <laughs> I'm putting the liquid cheese. <laughs> Quinn, you should just tell, you should literally go to subway.com and look up, you know, their info. And then you should email this and be like, I want to own a subway one day mm -hmm. and then go and then they'll pay for your college or something. Yeah, smart. Do it. Quinn, I imagine you're a child and here's the power <laughs> of being a child. You could write a letter to like the founder of Subway, HR Subway or whatever <laughs> their name is. And you can say, hello, my name is Quinn. I am, uh, let's say, 11 years old. 12, 11. Uh, you know, and, and this is where I'm 45. from. And then you say, I think you should add vats of nacho cheese to all your restaurants. And they have a chance of doing that because they can use it as a marketing opportunity. And, and you should really spread all of your efforts around while you are a child. Any dream you ever have that involves a company, write a letter to that company. Yeah. Just do it. You never know well, where it'll take you. Not us. We won't fold. No. We don't negotiate with child terrorists. No, we don't. <laughs> Or regular terrorists. You <laughs> know, no. Once you turn eighteen, <laughs> if you decide to, you then know, you negotiate then with terrorists. Negotiate, yeah. Okay. Do we have one also, more? Also, America this? negotiates with terrorists all the time. I don't know we where that. Well, not well, who said that. I don't know. We it's, will not negotiate with terrorists. Was that we like Reagan? literally do? We're constantly bargaining. Was that with terrorists. Reagan? Man, Bush? Who said that? Who said we don't negotiate with terrorists? You think it was? Uh, you think it was Reagan? Sounds like a Reagan thing. Yeah. To say. Nixon. I was way off. Nixon, all right. I am not a crook. <laughs> you know? I, he said that. <laughs> and on that note, thank you so much. Are we done? So I want to do one more. No, thank no. you so much. One more, one more. Maggie, I want to do one more, Maggie, round it back up. Nicole doesn't want to go home. <laughs> no. Um, hey, guys. I'm Lily from Oklahoma, and I actually have two opinions. Ooh, Firstly, French toast isn't good. <laughs> it's just like overrated soggy bread. And secondly... Eggs that are like cooked in an oven or some sort of like breakfast casserole are absolutely disgusting. Mm. The like texture is so weird and rubbery. Anyways, I love your podcast. Bye. Lily coming in hot and swinging with the energy of a of a misanthropic teenager. I love it. Love it. Right. That's yeah, what totally. I want my teenagers to be. Yeah, yeah. When I go into Starbucks and there's a teenager in there, they shouldn't be all Chick Fil A. I'm happy to see uh, my sure. pleasure. No. You should be pissed off. You should have multiple piercings. You should be. You should have one earphone in. You shouldn't care about my order. You should you get should, my name wrong. You should um, look like you were on the cast of Daria. You know the animated show Daria. Correct. Yeah. 
Bring Malays back to teens. Yeah, I want a Malays Malaysians. <laughs> <laughs> I haven't podcasted with you so long. I don't know how to talk to oh, you anymore. <laughs> French toast. Uh, it's good. I love it. It's it's my favorite get it. of the breakfast. You uh, got to get it from somewhere good. What do we call? What do we call the triumvirate of waffles, pancakes, French toast? What do we call them? I don't. There, there needs to be a collective name for the triple entente. Like the Father, Son, Holy Spirit. But uh, yeah, like a breakfast. yeah. I don't know. I hop. <laughs> I guess I don't know. But that's my favorite of those. I, but I love soggy eggy things. To baked eggs, this is a pretty good opinion that I've never heard eloquated like that. Mm-hmm. Anytime you bake an egg, it, it does get kind of worse than if you cooked it any um, other way than baking it. I actually really like it whenever you take eggs and then you put cream and then you bake it. Like quiche. Not like quiche. Like you crack an egg, you put cream oh, in it. And you, in oh, and you... In a cocoat oh, oh. or whatever. Eggs and cocoat. Is that what it's called? Eggs and cocoat? Egg, uh, yeah, I think but so. But like the cream kind of caramelizes? Yeah, and then you cook it in a bain-marie. You yeah. got to cook, cook your eggs in a bain-marie. But bain-marie, you're like effectively steaming it, right? It's good Like though. you're kind of the... Uh, Not really. Why don't you just agree with you one time? Lily, that's an astute observation. And I hope that you work a retail job and you are mean to customers because that is your right as a teen in America. I don't know if you're a teen. I have no, you could be a 37 year old career woman. Yeah. Quinn could be 45. What? It just had big teen energy there, right? At BTE? Sure. BTE. And on that note, thank you so much for stopping by. A hot dog is a sandwich. Your favorite podcast (laughs) that you listened to in the last 40 minutes. Uh, <laughs> we got new audio only episodes every Wednesday. We got new audio only episodes every Wednesday and new <laughs> audio only episodes every Wednesday, wherever you get your Wednesdays. We got new audio only episodes every Wednesday and we got our videos coming out on the mythical kitchen channel. What up every Sunday. If you want to be featured on opinions or like casseroles, you can hit us up at 833-DOGPOD1. The number again is 833-DOGPOD1 specifically interested in children who want to write letters to companies and uh, misanthropic teens. Those are the big uh, opinions we're seeking right now. For more Mythical Kitchen, check out our videos where we launch videos every week. <laughs> what is oh, this? Wait, no, no, this is the copy I got. For more Mythical Kitchen, check out our other videos. We launch new videos every week. Is that right? Did yes. I don't know who's that. Hey, for more Mythical Kitchen, check out our videos where we <laughs> make them all the time. Until we die. We will not stop. Our videos will outlive you and your sons. <laughs> there will be nothing left in this world but dust and ash and bone and nuclear fallout. And content. And content. We'll see you next time.